Well, it finally happened. Both the Sedin twins have officially announced their retirement from the National Hockey League, and that'll be two big subtractions from the Vancouver Canucks opening lineup headed into the 18-19 season. So, that leaves us with a huge question. What now? I'm Paul DiRienzo, and today we'll continue the What Now series focusing on the Vancouver Canucks. We'll be discussing their draft selections, their players coming up, their opening night roster, and more to determine the fate of the Vancouver Canucks this year and for years to come. With that being said, let's get started. Like we mentioned, the subtractions of the scene twins will affect the Vancouver Canucks offense especially, which means young stars are going to have to come up and try to fill in those gaps. So we have two of them right off the bat. These two could potentially help the Vancouver Canucks offensively for years to come. Enter Brock Besser. He's one of the two that will help the Vancouver Canucks at least try to produce more points this season. Now granted, they probably won't make the playoffs, but if you have Brock Besser on your team, you know you're going to get point production and loads of offensive talent, which is what Brock Besser brings to the Vancouver Canucks night after night. Not to mention last season, he was a candidate for the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year and made the NHL All-Star Game as a rookie. Those are two huge accomplishments. Although he didn't take home the Calder Trophy last season, he is one of the best rookies that came out of last season and will strive once again, hopefully and most likely playing first-line minutes. As you can see, Brock Besser's stats last season shows that he put up 29 goals and 26 assists for 55 points, and that is huge, especially in a rookie year. He also had a 16.2 shooting percentage, which is great because the more shots equals more opportunities to get pucks in the back of the net, which is exactly what Vancouver needs heading into this season. So Brock Besser will be another huge, impactful player once again the Vancouver Canucks. However, he isn't the only player that will hope to make an impact. Enter Bo Horvat. Bo Horvat will most likely be playing first line center for the majority of the 18. 19 season which will allow him to improve his game and point production as well. Bo Horvat is another one of the Vancouver Canucks players that is highly praised throughout the Canucks organization and fan base. As you can see from his stats he put up 22 goals and 22 assists for 44 points which is also pretty solid. He has a 13.9 shooting percentage which is pretty decent. If he could shoot more and up his point production he will be a huge impactful player for the Vancouver Canucks offense. This is the Vancouver Canucks offense as of right now. Besides Horvat and Bessler we just mentioned, it's pretty eh if you ask me. Now, Berici will probably play first line left wing and he'll probably produce 30 to 35 points. However, Sutter and Gagne and even Erickson are pretty average and Vertanen still raises some question marks. So, it's a bit risky as of now. However, Vancouver has some of the most highly valued prospects as of now, and their prospect pool is pretty solid, featuring Elias Pedersen. Now, from his scouting report from a few years ago, his Stacy is a crafty, agile two-way forward, and he's consistently productive in all three zones. That'll help the Vancouver Canucks especially, and there's even rumors saying that Pedersen will be called up to play this season. If so, he'll be a very impactful player who will provide some more talent for the Vancouver Canucks this season. Playing in the Swedish League last season in 44 games, he put up 24 goals and 32 assists for 56 points, and that is big. And if you can produce 50 points, imagine what he could do in the NHL. He'll probably be around 35 to 40, which will be huge for a Vancouver Canucks team who's going to need a bunch of offense. The Canucks could also use some defensive players as well to help benefit the defensive side of the game and hopefully improve Markstrom's play as well. Enter their 7th round draft pick, Quinn Hughes. Now he's already said he's not going to play this season, but next season, if he does decide to play for the Canucks, He'll be a huge impactful player. He was a highly valued prospect headed into the draft that took place a couple months ago and 
His scouting report states that he's an elite defensive talent that has mastered the element of both speed and decision making, which should help the Vancouver Canucks defensively and a little bit more offensively as well if you think about it. Playing in the University of Michigan, he was able to put up 5 goals and 24 assists for 29 points, which is pretty solid. And if he can produce that many assists, he'll be a big playmaker, especially on the defensive side of play. So he could read players from all ends of the ice and set them up from pretty much anywhere. That's a highly talented player. When he does suit up for the Vancouver Canucks, he'll be a highly anticipated player to watch. And I'll be excited to see him play and to see how well he does with the Vancouver Canucks organization. This season, Jacob Markstrom struggled in net for the Vancouver Canucks, and they have a backup now of Anders Nilsson. Their goaltending is going to need some help. However, with the addition of Thatcher Demko from the draft a couple of years back, he'll be a huge piece for the future of the Canucks goaltending. Demko's composure in net is a modified butterfly style. Many scouts have compared to as a Pecorine-like style of play, which is a big compliment. Last season, he played 46 games. Five more after a game in the NHL, but in those 46 games, he posted a 2.44 goals against average, a .922 save percentage, with a winning record. That's big. Looking at past performances and statistics, I've come to find that Demko is very consistent and very athletic, which should help the Vancouver Canucks, especially in net and with additions like Hughes to their defensive line. In the next couple of years, having Hughes in front of Demko would really be huge, and having Demko and Net in general would help the Vancouver Canucks goaltending tremendously. With that, that's going to be the end of today's video, and surprisingly, I haven't even mentioned players like Yolve, who, although is struggling as of now, is a pretty good defensive prospect, and centerman Dalin, who they acquired from the Ottawa Senators in a Burroughs trade, and Burroughs is now retired. But, I want your thoughts. What now? Where do the Canucks stand? Do they have a legitimate shot in the next couple of years to get back into the playoffs? Can a potential core of Hughes, Besser, Horvat, and Pedersen lead the Canucks further down the line? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you liked today's video and the content of the channel, hit the like button. To support the channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell so we notify when new videos come out. And as always, I'm Paul DiRienzo, and I'll catch you next time.